Part two of the lift system. I've already gone ahead and mounted the actual lift pump to the floor in front of the radiator. Um, it can be positioned in any position, you know, any orientation. They say it's best the pump facing upwards, uh, but what it'll do is it'll just take the pump a little bit longer to bring it to full lift in a different position. So it's good as it is. I like it like this because of room for the future for all the air conditioning parts that are going to run through here and just keeping it out of the way also of other things. So there's a couple of fittings that go into it and you're, there's two ports, A and B. Um, that's in, there's two in case you're going to run the back and the, and the front in the lift. I've uh, never done an SLC with the lift in the back also um, and never have found a need for it. So you're just going to pick one to get plugged. And it's got a little rubber gasket in there. Make sure it's there before you put it in. So I'm going to plug A and leave B for The actual usage where the where the lines are going to come out of and you want to put in these first the T fitting here because after this fitting goes in you won't be able to turn the uh, the hose barb one. You won't be, if you put that one in before the T fitting. You won't be able to spin the T fitting. Now you notice I put a little bit of thread sealant on there, which if you do that, keep it away from the edge so that there's none actually here that can go down inside of the actual system. And it's an N N -T -P -N N -P -T fitting, so it should get to a certain point you know, where those threads are pretty locked down and you want to orient it in a way that's going to work. You think about where am I going to run these lines? One line's going over to each side. I want to route this line here back behind the battery over to that ram on the driver's side. And this one's going to loop and then come down this way so it's it's angled in the orientation I want. If you're watching this video after watching the first one where I was switching the shock, the phone call at the end was from, from Fran from Superlight Cars and calling to uh, go over a couple things on future builds, etc. It's always nice when the owner of the company actually calls you and offers support. All right, and then we also have a reservoir which gets filled with power steering in the system, power steering fluid. And I've already drilled the two holes here on the sidewall, just as long as it's up above there so the, the fluid will flow down to the hose. And the 
this is this going to mount? Up above the pump. A little helpful thing, there's a little black gasket in there and the, you know, the reservoir actually slides over the mount here. Same thing, same type of setup as the, the brake fluid reservoirs. Uh, you want to put, kind of like a oil, what you do with an oil filter, put a little film of whatever fluid comes inside of the reservoir on that gasket. So when you push it down over, the gasket is lubricated so it'll slide instead of getting bunched up, getting out of place, and then you end up with leaks. But make sure you use the same, the same type of fluid that goes in the reservoir. So on this one I put a little power steering fluid on it, and on the brake and clutch reservoirs I put on um, hydraulic brake fluid on the brake and clutch. But this, this gets power steering. So they supply also the you know the tube that goes over that goes from one to the other the reservoir to the pump. With these remote reservoirs, it's nice because you could position this anywhere that you have room, which in these cars you can run out of room pretty quick. Yeah, and this cutter is definitely not necessary for this hose. It's just convenient because it's, it's what I use for the stainless steel brake, or not brake lines, fuel, fuel lines. Cut some nice and clean. I know in one of my videos, somebody wasn't happy that I used such a big big cutter for the stainless steel lines. Don't really know why, because it certainly works nicely. And think a little bit when you put when you put these clamps on there, think about the orientation. Are you going to be able to access it? You know, to tighten it? Is it going to get in the way of something else? So you notice that I'm really not tightening anything at this point, and I'm not marking anything as tightened. Also, I'll go back just for the sake of 
time on the video. So that's basically the you know the setup of the pump and its reservoir. Now it's just got four bolts that are mounting it down there. The reservoir has two that mount it straight through the aluminum. And then there's the plug, which is going to plug the the back one of what would have been the back port, and then there's an adapter that goes from this port into the T. Now the lines are just going to come out of here. These guys down here are pressure adjusters. You know how much you'll see when the thing actually runs, you, you'll adjust it to make sure it's going to full lift and then coming back down. And then now we have fittings that will go on the actual rams themselves, the two ports here. So I use the closest one for the 90 degree. And when you do something like that, when you drop it on the ground, make sure nothing got in there, there's no debris, so that we don't mess things up in the system. So it will end up oriented basically like that. Make it a little bit down so that the line will sweep that way. And then the other port, the whole package comes with plugs also for the other one, which will which will double as a, a bleeder. And it's already got thread sealant on it and so, but I'm just going to leave that until the system runs. When you bleed it, you're just going to leave it loose and the air will bubble out of there. And then once it's just kind of fluid coming out of there, it's not as precise as like a brake line. It doesn't need to be bled to the point where every last bubble is out of there, but it does help. Looking at these, the ram set up here, you know, when the, when the ride height is adjusted, you'll find that the ram doesn't make it into that collar and there are zero zero pressure springs spring rates that can go in their helper springs which will just expand when it's in a situation like this to keep this thing where it's supposed it goes down here and so that this the ram will always be in that shock collar up there the helper spring will go down here because when this is at hold the correct ride height, this collar is going to be way up here. And so the helper spring can go in, in the bottom and fill that gap. This car's not getting them because the owner didn't want them. Simple as that. So you'll, it'll, it will go back in there, it just won't go back in instantly. So when you adjust your ride height, you got to make sure that this collar is engaged. So the last thing to do on this is to actually make the, you know, the hydraulic lines that go from the ram to the pump. And the kit that comes with it has the stainless correct line to make them and, and the fittings that go on there. So the next thing I'll actually, I'll actually make one of them. They're a little bit different than the AN lines, the fuel AN lines, but they're pretty straightforward also.